Hey, thanks for joining me today. This is Pastor Lafayette. We are still in Psalm 105. Left off yesterday, right around verse 24. We're going to pick this up and talk about something that uh, I find a little interesting. Talking about when his people were in Egypt, it said, He increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. He turned their heart to hate his people, to deal craftily with his servants. Uh, we stop there because some people have the impression what that means is God makes some people bad and makes some people good. I see it a little differently than that. I see that uh, because we are owed nothing, we are not, we, we're not owed, owed a lifetime of grace. Listen to me. When God calls, you should respond because you might not have it tomorrow. You might not have another minute. Uh, he doesn't have to continue to extend his grace to you for an unending period of time. And when I say that, this is what, I'm, what I mean, is that, you know, if people continually reject God over and over again, he can and he has the right to say, I'm finished with you. Um, <clears throat> so here we have a people, first off, who are not covenant people. They don't want to be covenant people. They're Egyptians. They didn't really want to serve God. Um, and so basically he used them. Once you, listen, you're either going to benefit the kingdom of God one way or the other. God can use a wicked person or someone who chooses not to be part of the covenant. He will use them to benefit his kingdom. He will do all he can to benefit his kingdom. He doesn't owe them anything. And so, you know, God will use you to be a blessing. If you're a believer, you're serving God, he'll use you to be a blessing. But if you don't want to, and you don't want to serve him, he's still going to use you. Uh, it might not be in the way you like it, but he owes you nothing. If he uses you to make an example of you, he can do that. He is God, remember? So my advice to all who are listening today, if God's dealing with you about something, do it now. Don't wait till tomorrow. You don't even know if you've got tomorrow. Take care of the business with God today. Do that while he's calling, because you might not hear his voice calling another week down the road or another month down the road. Take care of your business with God today. Um, I hope that helps. I hope I didn't make things cloudy. Verse 26, he sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen. They performed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness, made it dark. They did not rebel against his word. He turned their waters into blood and killed their fish. Their land abounded with frogs, even in the chambers of the kings. He spoke and there were swarms of flies and lice in all their territory. He gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. He struck their vines, their fig trees, splintered the trees of their territory. He spoke and locusts came, young locusts without number. He ate up all the vegetation in their land, devoured the fruit of their ground. He destroyed all the firstborn in their land, the first of all their strength. He also brought them, uh, now listen, so verse up to verse 36, he's saying all the things that he did to make his point. Let my people go. And, and you've got to understand, if you're a believer, God will move heaven and earth to, 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 to put you in that position, to free you, to bless you, to prosper you. Now understand, it's very clear that the righteous shall suffer persecution. There are going to be things that we're going to, there will be those of us who will be martyred. <coughs> but God is always looking out for those in the kingdom. And uh, just a bunch of bad circumstances by bad people, that's one thing. To be martyred for the sake of the gospel, that's a totally different thing. Uh, that's another one of those hairline splinter things that I would have to really describe. But if I'm out preaching the gospel and someone beats me up because I'm preaching the gospel, well... Praise God, I was persecuted for preaching the gospel. But I'm just a regular old Joe guy, whatever, and I'm, I'm just a Christian, and I'm doing something, and I get mugged. I, or, or, you know, I, I believe God, I'm trying to think how to describe this. I believe that there is a difference in being persecuted as a Christian and just being persecuted because there, there's wickedness in the world. God always 
has his eye on you. Remember that. He's always trying to work things out for your benefit. Um, then he talks about Egypt. I'm sorry, Israel. He brought them out with silver and gold. There was none feeble among the tribes. That's verse 37. Egypt was glad when they departed. The fear of them had fallen upon them. He spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give them light in the night. The people asked, he brought them quail. He satisfied with them, them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock and water gushed out. It ran in the dry places like a river. For he remembered his holy promise and Abram his servant. He brought out his people with joy, his chosen ones with gladness. He gave them the lands of the Gentiles. They inherited the labor of their enemies or the nations that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise the Lord. This is very simple. God is always moving for his covenant people. Always moving for his covenant people. He is working things out. He is doing things for you. Put your trust in him. Believe in him. God is going to do amazing things if we can believe, if we will trust. He's worthy of praise. So give him praise. He's worthy of honor. He's worthy to be obeyed. So obey him. Serve God. Put your trust in him and you will find that things will work out. There will be a process and there's going to be some pain, but God will bring it out in the end because he divinely cares for you. You are, you, you are intimately cared for. Father, bless these who are hearing today. Help them understand that you love them. The Father, you want the best for them. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining me today. Take care. Bye-bye.